On July 1, 2025, astronomers in Chile detected something that defies every astronomical prediction. A comet racing toward the Sun at a record 58 kilometers per second with chemical signatures eight times richer in carbon dioxide than anything seen before. But the real shock came next. 3i. Atlas wasn't alone. Rather, it was leading an unprecedented convoy of six massive comets forming the largest comet convergence in recorded history, all synchronized to reach the inner solar system within just 18 days this October. As the world's top observatories raced to gain access to the convoy's secrets before its Mars flyby on October 3rd, one question loomed. Is this a cosmic coincidence or a signal that everything we thought we knew about the solar system is about to change? At 2014 UTC on July 1, 2025, the Atlas Telescope in Rio Hurtado, Chile, registered a streak that didn't fit any familiar pattern. Valentina Gutierrez, lead astronomer on the night shift, watched as the system's auto-scan flagged a fast-moving object crossing a dense star field. The initial alert was routine. Atlas processes thousands of transients every night. But this one didn't follow through. Diego Palma, keeping an eye on the pipeline, checked the parallax between sequential exposures. The object's shift was so abrupt it triggered a secondary review. Within minutes, internal messages sped through the observatory's Slack channel. Gutierrez typed, got a fast mover. Unusual. Not an MPC database. Please check parallax residuals. Palma pulled up the raw frames, overlaying them against the Minor Planet Center's latest sky map. Nothing matched, no comet cataloged, no asteroid that should be moving at that angle or speed. The time-stamped images showed a point of light accelerating at 58 kilometers per second, almost three times faster than any comet previously recorded inbound to the solar system. Standard procedure demanded caution. Gutierrez requested a third confirmation using a separate camera ray. The object's track remained dependable, cutting across the field with a hyperbolic trajectory and a faint reddish halo. Could this be interstellar? Someone wrote. The mood in the control room shifted from fatigue to nervous anticipation. The team ruled out satellite glints, cosmic rays, and software problems. The parallax measures stood up to scrutiny. Every test pointed to the same conclusion, this was not a solar system object. At 20 to 30 UTC, the team packaged the observation set and dispatched it to the Minor Planet Center, flagging the candidate as a possible interstellar visitor. The submission included precise astrometry, photometry, and a request for urgent follow-up. Within hours, automated scripts at the MPC began cross-referencing the data. The Atlas team stayed glued to their screens, watching as the world's clearing house for new objects picked up their alert. The sense of waiting was electric. By sunrise in Chile, the discovery had a name, Three-Eyed Atlas, the third interstellar object ever confirmed. For Gutierrez and Palma, the night's adrenaline hadn't faded. Already, their discovery was altering the records of planetary science. Spectroscopic teams across the globe scrambled to secure time on every available instrument. By the early hours of July 2nd, the first spectra from the very large telescope in Chile and Gemini North and Hawaii arrived in the Atlas inbox. Everyone paused at the data. Instead of the familiar fingerprints of carbon monoxide and water vapor, the spectrum revealed something out of place. Carbon dioxide features dominated the signal, far stronger than expected for any comet at this distance from the Sun. In side-by-side -side comparisons, the carbon dioxide lines outshone water by a wide margin. Astronomers at the European Southern Observatory called it carbon dioxide dominated, a label almost never applied to objects this far from the Sun. At the same time, a faint but unmistakable cyanide signature appeared at the spectrum's blue end. Cyanide gas is common in comets, but here it was present at a rate comparable to the brightest solar system examples. The detection was soon confirmed by NASA's Infrared Telescope Facility and the Gran Telescopio Canarias. Each team ran their own calibrations, checked for contamination, and compared results to decades of commentary data. The numbers held up.
dust, cyanide, and carbon dioxide, with a continuum and a redder slope than any other comet observed in the last decade. Attention then turns to the size of the nucleus. Hubble's first direct imaging run, using its Wide Field Camera 3, measured the central brightness and coma profile. The best fit suggested a nucleus smaller than one kilometer across, possibly as little as 300 meters. The result was paradoxical, such a small body producing such a rich, dusty coma. Normally, comets of this size are quiet, their activity limited by surface area and sunlight. Yet 3i, Atlas was shedding dust and gas at a rate comparable to much larger comets. A combination of high CO levels, persistent cyanide, and a compact hyperactive nucleus baffled even seasoned cometologists. The chemical ratios didn't fit any familiar template. Some compared the spectrum to Borisov, the previous interstellar visitor, but Borisov displayed much less carbon dioxide and far more water at this distance. Others noted the coma's deep red hue, a possible sign of complex organics or unusually processed dust grains. Every measurement pointed to a body shaped by conditions far beyond the solar system's norm. For the first time, the question shifted from how fast 3i Atlas was moving to what exactly it was made of. The odds of this clustering, given the known long-term distribution of interstellar comets, are so remote that one official described it as less than one in a billion. Dates for the perihelion stack up almost like a cosmic schedule. See 2025A6 Lemon, 3I, Atlas on October 29th, and others such as Suchinchan, Atlas, and Panstars are threaded in between. Two more objects are still under consideration, projected to round the sun in the same interval. Each orbit is angled, stretched, or skewed in a different direction. Their periods calculated from astrometric arcs and refined nightly refuse to converge on a common resonance or shared past. Still, the clustering persists, immune to the usual explanations of survey bias or seasonal visibility. For context, the last time a cluster of this scale was deemed even remotely plausible, it was linked to the aftermath of a distant stellar flyby an event capable of dispersing or cloud objects into the inner solar system over millions of years. But here, the comet's paths diverge so widely in both inclination and velocity that a single trigger seems unlikely. Each orbital solution, posted to the minor planet center, stands alone. Nevertheless, the sun sees them arrive almost in concert. The convoy's choreography, when measured, becomes even stranger against planetary waypoints. On October 3, 2025, 3i, Atlas will pass Mars at a distance of 30 million kilometers. ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter and ESAS Mars Express will both be watching every instrument trained to catch each spectral flicker. Earth, on the other hand, sits safely on the sidelines. Minimum approach for the entire group is to 170 million kilometers, more than twice the distance between the Sun and Mars. Only spectacle, no risk. But the spectacle is not just visual. For orbital dynamicists, it is statistical shock, a cosmic lottery ticket punched seven times consecutively, every winner in the same month. There is no simulation, model, or historical record that can explain this degree of alignment. For now, the universe refuses to explain itself. Peer-reviewed drafts from the James Webb and very large telescope teams arrived in late July, and the language inside was blunt. Spectra from both instruments confirmed a volatile inventory that did not precisely match established comet models. The carbon dioxide signature dominated, with water and carbon monoxide trailing far behind. But it was the metallic fingerprint that drew the sharpest scrutiny, atomic nickel vapor present at levels familiar from solar system comets but unexpected in an interstellar object. For several reviewers, this was the sticking point. One wrote, multiple natural explanations have been considered without satisfactory fit to the data. The nickel lines weren't the only surprise. Time series photometry from the Very Large Telescope hinted at periodic fluctuations in brightness, but no consensus formed around a single cycle. 
Some teams reported intervals as short as two hours. Others detected shaky signals near eight. The much-rumored 4.2-hour outgassing rhythm often cited in online forums failed to materialize in scrutinized data sets. Instead, the record showed erratic variability, activity that resisted easy classification. The community, already nervous, adopted these findings cautiously. The detection of atomic nickel vapor so uncommon in interstellar objects compelled theorists to reconsider assumptions about how such metals could survive the journey between stars. Was it a remnant of formation or a hint at something more deliberate? Reviewers urged restraint, but the fact remained no current model, natural or otherwise, could explain the convoy's synchronized arrival, its chemical fingerprints, or its refusal to fit the standard commentary rule book. For now, the data stood as a challenge, not an answer. Within ESAS Operations Center, the first hours after the Atlas alert set off a chain of guarded emails and closed-door meetings. Protocol demanded a 12-hour embargo enough time for the Minor Planet Center to cross-check trajectory and composition, but long enough for rumors to leak. Junior analysts demanded immediate release, citing the object's hyperbolic path and the absence of any credible Earth threat. Their appeals landed in a thread marked internal only. The official line, repeated in every memo, confirm interstellar status before public announcement. Avoid panic. Avoid error. Meanwhile, Mars Express mission planning turned contentious. The comet's flyby on October 3rd would require repurposing key instruments, sacrificing months of atmospheric science. Project scientist Colin Wilson argued it was a rare opportunity Mars Express was the only craft in position for a close-up view. Resistance came from engineers worried about data corruption and instrument risk. Committee minutes from September 8th show the split, three votes for, two against. Within hours, Wilson drafted a new observation plan, rerouting Mars Express to concentrate on the inbound ExoMars TGO convoy. Meanwhile, archival teams scoured old sky surveys. By evening, images from June 14th surfaced in the archives of ZTF and Atlas, confirming the object's path weeks before official discovery. These finds quietly circulated among senior staff but never made the press release. The embargo held barely. The gap widened between institutional caution and outside curiosity. For every official statement, dozens of forum posts speculated about what was being withheld. The secrecy meant to guarantee accuracy only deepened the sense that something extraordinary was unfolding. Sandine, an amateur astronomer known for tireless archive work, played a quiet but decisive role. While institutional teams debated embargoes, Dean combed through public survey data frame by frame. On June 14, 2025, he located faint traces of the object now known as 3i. Atlas and Atlas ends wiki transient facility archives weeks before the official discovery. Using meticulous cross-referencing and astrometric overlays, Dean refined the orbit, tightening error bars along its inbound path. His findings, posted to astronomy forums, gave professionals a head start on follow-ups and helped confirm the trajectory before any press release. For a brief moment, the separation of professional and citizen science dissolved. The global network of amateurs armed with open data and patient determination proved crucial to understanding the most unlikely comet alignment in living memory. As October draws to a close, the astronomical calendar moves into countdown. On October 29, 2025, 3i, Atlas will reach perihelion at 1.36 astronomical units, along with its companions trailing in a tightly packed sequence. The James Webb Space Telescope has reserved observation blocks for the entire perihelion window, aiming to capture the chemical evolution of each nucleus as they swing around the sun. Ground-based campaigns, coordinated through the Minor Planet Center, will push nightly imaging and spectroscopy from Chile to Hawaii to the Canary Islands. ESAS Mars Express and ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter will transmit flyby data until early October, while Hubble and the Very Large Telescope continue parallel monitoring through 2026. Every slot is committed. 
The next phase is no longer about discovery, but resolution, whether the convoy's secrets will finally yield under the most powerful eyes in the world. On October 3, 2025, ESAS Mars Express and ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter will document 3i Atlas as it passes Mars at 30 million kilometers, the closest known approach of an interstellar object to another planet. All seven comets in this convoy within just 18 days of perihelion represent the largest synchronized comet event in documented history. Spectral data from James Webb confirm an unprecedented 8 to 1 carbon dioxide to water ratio eight times higher than any previously observed comet. Atomic nickel vapor and disputed outgassing cycles continue to present challenges to comet models. Despite coordinated efforts by global observatories and amateurs, the cause of this synchronized arrival remains a mystery. Key spectroscopic findings and once hidden detection images are now public, but numerous technical studies remain under embargo. As the world's telescopes prepare for the October 29th perihelion, one thing is certain, the 3i Atlas convoy has redefined our understanding of interstellar visitors. What triggered this convergence remains unknown, but its impact on science is already undisputed.